critiquing the little dumb stuff that, you, that I did. I made a lot of, a lot of JV moves, a lot of JV errors. Um, you know, I didn't have my, the setup the, the right way. Uh, literally tripping every set of double unders, I think, except for two. So um, I think I tripped twice on one of them. Um, yeah, just a lot of, you know, silly mistakes that cost you time at every every set. This is a workout like we were talking about. Oh, it has to be perfect. And so to make those little mistakes, you know, just even though I'm not doing it for any reason, I'm not trying to compete. I'm not trying to go to quarterfinals. I'm not trying to go to the games. You know, it's just now it's just like, okay. And it's just a competitor inside of me that comes out and fine tuning every little thing that I am trying to do. Cause I still want to give my best effort while I'm trying to do it. I'm not just going to the motions. You know, I still want to do well. Um, you know, I have that inside me. It's never going to leave. So yeah, just kind of watching, critiquing the little things again, letting my left arm drift on my double unders was making me trip. Um, my very first set, I picked up my jump rope and I stepped on the rope <laughs> and dropped it. You know, those are all little mistakes that, and even though it's a 20 minute workout to, to, to get a top score, you can't have any of those little mistakes. And so that's what I didn't do. You know, and I should have, I always pull, I, I'm really fast at getting out of the rower with getting my uh, feet tight, the, the straps tight on my feet and it helps. And I did it the last two sets and my row felt so much better with than tight. And so I shouldn't have, not done it. So again, just all like getting in my head, overthinking things. That's an easy thing to do is to overthink and changing something last minute that you normally don't do is a, always a bad idea when it goes into competition, like do it how you normally practice it. Because if you do it differently or try to change something last minute to fix something, it's normally going to go wrong. And so all of those errors that I made, all those little mistakes that I made are stuff that I know I should have done and I still did them anyway. That's just me being out of competition now for six years. Um, allowing myself to, you know, have these little mess ups, allowing these little thoughts in my brain to try to push me to do something that I know I probably shouldn't do, but oh, maybe, it, maybe it'll be better. Maybe it'll be faster. But just trusting and believing in how you practice. It's a huge aspect of competing. So... Yeah, if you're going out there to compete and do it, don't change it up last minute. You know, like do it how you do it. You're going to get, you're going to walk into a gym and everyone's going to have their opinions on how you should do it, how you should move the fastest, how you should organize your, but like listen and that's fine and hear people. But man, like if you know how you do your dumbbell unders, do them that way. If you know how you do your rower, you know what setting you have that, where you have your feet, do it that way. Um, don't change up your deadlift, right? Like, if you do a mixed grip, do a mixed grip. If you do double overhand, do double overhand. You know, all those things will add up. And if you're, how you practice it is going to be way easier for your body to move smoothly through this workout if you do it the way that you've always done it instead of trying to change it up last night. So don't be like me. I'm a dummy. <laughs> James Hobart. I don't know if we've ever done an open workout together. We did one last year, dumbass. Oh shit, yeah, everything. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fucking it. It's too good that fucking in the uh, 14. The 2014 yeah. repeat. <laughs> I put that up. just mind. talked about it seven seconds. Where's your brain at? James Hobart. He's already put weight on the bar. Jesus, James, chill out. I know, I'm just like, I don't want to go. I'm going to bang my head off this thing. Oh, that's a bad thing. Use these. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. You can work out today, I just don't do anything. You can work out. So, what? Yeah, yeah. And it's opposite. And it's opposite. Dude, me and my buddy basically did this workout and it was um, 
It was, I think it was a version of the games workout where they did the bike rope climb. But we took, we basically put two bikers out okay. next to my rope climb in San Diego. And so it kind of offset to where we would be, we would be off because it was just one rope climb. And, uh, and I was like, and he kept gaining on me though. Every time I could, I could tell it. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why is he gaining on me? And he was like, he's like, yeah, I was getting off that. Like we were going to. Two seventy. He was like, yeah, I was like, he was like fifty meters short. And I'm like, because I knew it would roll over. I'm like, that's not okay. Bro. Like this is a workout. Well, that's like what people do to reset their monitors. Oh yeah, I got bad about that. Yeah. I don't reset it. So it's like the echo bike. Oh no. I'm that guy, James. Sorry. It's a very CrossFit crossover. Oh, that's very, you know what I mean? Like, this is, this is it's a CrossFit yeah. crossover. This is grassroot crossover. Yes, baby. It's going to be very loud in here. Yeah. <laughs> let's, get, let's get the rhythm going. Let's see how this goes. Yeah. Well. Keep going. Take I'm just trying to lessen the transition as much as possible. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to get my ass. I was getting my ass. Oh, that would be a nice and actually. Yeah. That just cost you two seconds in the morning. That's, I mean, that's an insane amount of transition now. I don't know where you can watch. I'm doing your straps and you're loose. Loose? You I mean, loose. I, can't. I hate, I hate rolling with loose straps. <sighs> I'm actually pretty quick with the in out, too. Yeah, so I'm gonna leave, leave these just barely loose, like not overly loose, which where you basically have to jam your foot up and then back down. This is a quick little hack. I don't love it. I like to have mine tight, but you can easily get in and out. And you basically just have to remember, push your foot forward to get your heel out of that clip and then pull it up. Up forward, heel out. And you can do it at the same time. Boom. That's gonna save you two seconds around. That's huge if you're trying to trying to move. Have your transition super small. Um, you know, don't put too much space for us. I mean, probably optimal would be if you could have your rower deadlift, maybe jump rope, but this is just fine to be honest. Because it's just hard. At some point you have to move because of the because of there's three things and not just two. So I like this setup. I think this is good. Remember to find that pace on your rower. Don't go out hot. Because the difference between one to two seconds on that rower is a drastic in your heart rate and breathing. So find a good pace that you can maintain the whole time. Don't come out hot and try to hold on. Uh, the deadlifts, right, if this weight is good for you, right, it should be 10s. Um, if not, if that weight is heavy, you know, have, have quick set breaks in there. So maybe like three, four, three, or six, four, or five, five with a short break. And then double unders, don't trip. And don't get frustrated if you do trip, because the frustration is when you tend to trip again and trip again and trip again. And to be honest, if you have to take a one second break on the deadlift, that will be faster, a, tra a faster break than if you trip. A trip on a double under is like five, six seconds every time, no matter what. Hit a nice pace that you can continually maintain, right? Have target times in your head. So if you want what your round, have, a, have an idea of what your round is gonna be. Um, so for me, like my goal is gonna be like two minute rounds. Hopefully get 10, we'll see if it happens. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully don't fall off. But again, don't come out too hot on that rower. Got my man James here, he's about to crush it. I'm just gonna bait you, that's all I'm doing. I'm gonna- Go out hot. 130 round one. Go out just, hot, baby. And I'm just gonna- Hey, start slow and fade fast. Exactly. You know what I mean? That's me. That's the, that's the, that's the idea. <laughs> start slow, fade fast. All right. I guess, I guess there's nothing to it but to do it. Do you need chalk over there? No, I think I'm, if I have to chalk for this, it's a bad day. But I will chalk up once. I'm telling, who is it? Was that Katie Henniger who said that? Every time you re reach for the chalk bucket, you make a conscious decision to lose. I, I think that was Bill. God, I think it's actually Bill. Was, Bill. was that Bill? Yeah, I knew it was one of them. Yeah. Every time I grab chalk, I think about that. Yeah. <laughs> like you're being a loser. I, I sleep with chalk on my hands. I am a loser. <laughs> 
I'm gonna mix grip it. I might hook grip it on this hand. I don't have a good grip, so. The one thing I'm not gonna think about, and I, I thought this was a decent tip. I think if this is a deadlift for you that you're kind of, might be a little bit heavy or you're thinking about breaking it up, you should probably take a second to deep breath, get in a good set of position and pull. I'm gonna be a little less worried about like how symmetrical I am and having a perfect setup and that kind of stuff. But if you are worried about that setup, clean your bar, chalk it so you know right where your hand's going, you have to think about it. But I don't know if I'm gonna hook grip, we'll find out. Usually, definitely mixed grip though. All right, here we go. Bridges. I turned it off again, god damn it. Joshua Bridges, I got to do it too. James Hobart. Josh Bridges, 24.2. 45. Sorry, I'm done. James Hobart, 24.2. I told you we're going to need four minutes. I know, man. Good call. I tripped on every set of double under except for one. The two. final one. Two. Yeah. It cost you two right because you had to push on the row. Yeah. I was like, God damn it. Good job, James. Good job. Oh, it was my back. My back felt it. Yeah. My back felt. So much more than I thought it was going to. Yeah. I was like, Same. oh. Kept a relaxed grip though. Yeah. That was my goal grip felt good. I could tell like. Dude, your double ones were so serious. Getting, but I was getting slower to get to them. I know, I was like. Just a little bit of dilly dally. 
just have to keep that yeah. discipline. But yeah. Just put the rope in your hand. I know. Just hands on the bar. And then I was just like breathing with it. I was, uh, I wasn't finding my breath till like 20. And yeah. I was tripping at 37 or 38 every fucking time. I was like, God damn it. It's funny how much that does cost you, you were right. Dude, it's huge. Every trip it's five, seconds is five to six you seconds. You're composed. Yeah. So that's a good reason to be composed. Because you're getting, as I'm sitting there, starting three, to go four, back five, to six, three, four, at least, yeah, at least five or six reps. And you're like, God damn it. Well, that's that like good argument. If you do screw up, just stand there. Yeah. Do a single. Take a second. Yeah. Take a breath. Yeah. Don't try to jump right back with the doubles. So I don't ever do any single unders. I always start with every every reps of double under. Yeah, you, I do. It that was, workout, I feel like it helped. It did, probably did. Because you look really, yeah, you look really smooth. <laughs> I think having the setup where the, the deadlift is right there too helped. Yeah, I think, I think it's a little better than my head because I felt like I had to rush to it. Yeah. Where it was like, even though you had to step to the double under and step back, for me it was like. No, I like the step back because it allows me to reset my row. I yeah. Like one little. Right. So it was a good, it was good. It was like, you know, definitely a learning lesson. It's like, okay, have your deadlifts right next to your rower for sure. Um, and don't fucking trip. And like, if you don't trip, like that's a, like that's a very, every, every time, three seconds minimum, every time. I was like, damn it. I think I tripped twice, tw a couple times too. Yeah, that's, that's what you get around doing double unders very often. <laughs> But no, man, that was awesome. Great push, bro. Do you think it should have been 225 now after doing it that way? No. Yeah. I think it was good. That's good. I think I that too. I was like, I my only thing is I think it could be more reps. Like 12, 15. Like 15. Because the row, you know, it's not drastic, but it is the longest portion of the workout. And so offsetting with the deadlift a little bit, I think 300, 15, 50 might have been. A touch better, but I, I still don't think 15 would actually change it much. It almost had to be a 20. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because then you still, if you're shorter, you're going to get those, you'll get that 300 back. Yeah. Um, I think the row just has so much to do with it. Where it's like, even though it doesn't, it does. It does. I don't, like, I, when I find myself doing the first couple, the last couple, I was like, just get on it and start moving. And you did it slow. Yeah. And yeah. I was like trying to hit you with a big ball, but I was like, just get the row going. I, you know what's crazy too is like, I, I, I strapped my, the last two rounds, I actually tightened. It tightened and it felt drastically better. Like I was pulling a 147 at the same ease as I was pulling a 151. So it was like, God, I think it, it might've made more difference to actually, I might retest this on Monday just because I feel like- If you do, let me know. Yeah. Cause I have, a, like, I feel like I could definitely have made a lot of adjustments. Cause um, I gotta get those in your points for the gym. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. We can do it. Yeah, I think Cass might wait too because she sprained her ankle. So, dude, my ankle. I was actually worried about it because I sprained my ankle in London about a month ago, and I, dude, this morning though I didn't feel it at all. I mean, obviously it was a little adrenaline. I'm going up against James, so I was like, okay, yeah, I can, I'll be fine. I'll push. Yeah, your 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 ability to cycle is so much faster. Than that. That's always like this for me. Dude, yeah, yeah. Like just listening to your double, I was like, I was like, just try and jump a little faster, me. Yeah. Just like, my double unders have always. My double has always been fast, but man, like it didn't, it didn't matter yeah. because I tripped. Yeah, one trip, I it, it didn't matter. Like it was like, so, so in my head, I actually tried to start <laughs> slowing down a little bit, but typically when I slow down, it messes my rhythm up. So it was like, I just need to practice more. You know, I could feel it was my right arm or my left arm was coming out, you know, like, and that's the thing for anybody who struggles with double unders. If you watch oh, people yeah, double under, you got to turn around. Oh, they got, oh, a yeah. they got you. The Boston got you, man. Yeah, it happens. Uh, but what happens is when you double under is you're supposed to be here, like your, you got your six shooters, your pistols. And uh, what happens is one arm will start to drift and the rope will start to pull. And instead of seeing a U over your head, you'll see this like sideways U and that's where you trip. You'll hit, you'll typically hit on. So for me, it's always my left arm. And so I'll hit on my right side. I can feel it. Cause I was, once you start to struggle, obviously with your breath, you know, you're feeling it. You're like, you're like, oh. I don't care. Yeah. You know, whatever makes me feel more relaxed. That's what I was telling the generally did program for. I was like, this is just a workout. This is just a discipline workout, right? Like, it really is. You focus on that one little, because I saw myself on the rower. I was just like. What were you pulling? What was your weight? Uh, by the end, it was probably around like a 152, 154. You were, 
Yeah. I definitely got up there. Yeah, I was, I was like 150, 152. I started at like 147 for most of them. And then towards like around six and seven, I definitely was up in the 150s. Yeah. And then eight and nine, the last one I was, at like, I was like 135 or six. I was trying to roll like a negative, so like I would just get on there just to move. It doesn't care how long I'm running myself to like yeah. 100 meters, and I was like, okay, this is not the second one. Because off. exactly, it's not even that drastic. No. And, the, and the difference between a 147 and a 150 at 300 meters for your breathing is drastic, but for your fucking, your seconds on the rower, it's like nothing. Yeah. So, <sighs> yeah, that was good, man. I like that workout actually. Like, I do wish the deadlifts were probably like more like a 20. But whatever, my back would be fucking lit. It'd be interesting I, would, to try it that way too. I would definitely wear a belt, like a Velcro belt and loosen it. But man, that was, that 10 deadlifts, like I was feeling my back way more than I thought. Good yeah. stuff, James. Thank you for the gum. Yeah, of course. It's a game changer, super well. If you go do this, I would set mine up like this where the rower and the deadlifts are right next to each other. And then maybe have the double under, if you can, if you have the room to have all three right in a row. I didn't like having to take three steps to get to my deadlift. It was definitely starting to bug me. Um, even though my devil under was like drop and be right there. I think I would rather be able to just start the deadlifts and then take a step to get to my double unders. And again, that's just being really nitty pit nitpicky. Um, but man, when you, yeah, when you fine tune these workouts, this workout is just as small details workout. How fast can you make the transitions? What can you maintain on the row and don't trip on the double unders? That is it. That is all this workout is, and just keep maintaining that pace. So it's a fun workout, it's a really good time. Have fun with it. If you are gonna break up the deadlifts, small breaks, short breaths, stand up tall when you're doing it. Same thing with the uh, double under, if you trip, um, take a second, regroup, don't get frustrated, and then go again. And again, you're just keeping your hands right here, right? And it's a rhythm, it's a rhythm. That arms, one of your arms is probably, if you're tripping a lot, one of your arms is starting to drift and that shortens your rope to a side. And that's what's happening, that's what's causing you to trip. So again, just think elbows to the body and hands at your, at your hips. And that's the rhythm right there. So I know I didn't display it very well, but that's what, you're that's what you should be doing. I'm normally really good at double unders. Um, and so I just, yeah, I haven't, haven't done a ton of them. And so yeah, practicing this helps a lot. Um, so. Yeah, have fun with it. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Had Mr. James Hobart over here, uh, humbled me, got to 220. Yeah. 220, I got to 174 on the ninth round. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that. Now pass the word, it's time to pay him. <laughs>